Putra Stadium here in Kuala Lumpur for the Maybank Malaysia Open, the third event on the 12 tournament MetLife BWF World Super Series. Not only the third event, but also the second of five premier events, an even higher tier of tournament within the Super Series. Well, it's uh, the round of last 16 today here in Malaysia. And we're going to have five matches for you this afternoon. We're starting with women's singles and Li Shui Rei, the Olympic champion, also happens to be the defending champion here in Malaysia. She's up against Akane Yamaguchi. Then we'll have men's doubles and a relatively new partnership of Pratama and Suwadi from Indonesia. They're up against the two-time world championship bronze medalist Kim Ji Jung and Kim Sa Rang. Then women's doubles and home involvement with Vivian Hu and Woon Ki Wei in the women's doubles up against the qualifiers, Awanda and Lee Katut. Then uh, women's singles uh, again, and we have Okohara up against the 2013 world champion, Rakshanok Intanon. Then we'll be finishing with men's singles and a man very much in form at the moment, Shrikanth Kidambi. Three finals from four tournaments this year, including winning India last week. He's up against Tian Hao Wei. Well, of course, the 12 Super Series uh, events all uh, go towards the Destination Dubai Super Series Finals because it's only the results from these 12 Super Series uh, events uh, that count towards the qualification uh, process for the Super Series Finals, the end of year championships. And of course, the Destination Dubai in December last year, what a success it was. And all the players still talking about it and eager to qualify for this year's Destination Dubai World Super Series Finals. So as I say, it is a round of last 16 and we're going to start with the women's singles and the number one seed, Li Shui Rei of China are up against a former world junior champion, a former, she's reigning world junior champion, Akane Yamaguchi. And there they are, waiting in the wings. I'm Jill Clark, I'm delighted to say that sitting alongside me, uh, no, I was gonna say an old friend and colleague, less of the old, I think, Ian, Ian Wright, uh, Development uh, Director of Development at the BWF, the Badminton World Federation, and of course, former head coach in England. And Ian, an interesting match, our first one coming up. Well, I think it's a great start to the evening's badminton. Um, the Charé, you know, a little bit with injuries. We know she's someone who likes to play a lot of tournaments to find a rhythm. It'll be interesting to see what form she's in against a real up-and-coming player in the, the Japanese girl. She's made enormous progress over the last 12 months. Yes, that's an understatement, I think, when you think that last year's Super Series, she played, we're actually looking at Nishwe Rei, but uh, Akane Yamaguchi played 10 of the 12 Super Series tournaments. She started in the qualifying of nine of those 10, qualified for the Super Series Finals, reached the semi-final of the Super Series Finals. She's made huge strides over the last 12 months. Yes, so I wholeheartedly agree with you there, Ian. But here is the number one seed, the defending champion, Li Shui Rei, the 24-year-old born in Chongqing in Sichuan province. But earlier today, she lost her number one ranking. Li Shui Rei, the world ranking run every Thursday, updated weekly. So this, obviously, from the top section of the draw, seeing as we have the number one seed, Li Shui Rei. Yesterday, she beat uh, Nina Kierkegaard in two straight games, but a very tight second game. Akane Yamaguchi beating Karen Schnauzer to reach the round of last 16. So, two players who've already enjoyed much success at the Super Series level. And the Olympic champion, Li Shuere, well, she's the number one seed, but she's down two places to number three. Lost her number one ranking after 118 consecutive weeks as world number one. Well, last year, she won the title, beating Wang Shoshian in the final and her win-loss record for the year. 
translates into losing second round of the All England, the first Super Series event of the year, and of course the first Premier Super Series as well. So her opponent, the 17-year-old Fukui uh, Akane Yamaguchi, born in Fukui in Japan. 13 on the world ranking at the moment. She has been one place higher. She's been up at number 12, spent three weeks there from the 24th of December. Now, last year, she was a quarter finalist here, having come through the qualifying. That just emphasizes what we were talking about, Ian, with so many qualifying rounds last year, but still doing well in the main draw of these Super Series. Well, as I say, she beat Akane Yamaguchi yesterday. She was a semi-finalist at the Swiss Grand Prix Gold event and a couple of first round losses as well, including the All England and the other one was the German Grand Prix Gold. So there, Shoji Sato, the Japanese coach, he was a fine men's singles player as well, wasn't he? Three time All England quarter finalist. Her coach, so to Li Chue Rei's coach, and there's a familiar figure. Shen Jin, former world champion in 2010 in Paris. Well, this will be the second meeting between these two players. Well, I hope you could hear the umpire. I was just struggling to hear that. That's Trish Gubb from New Zealand. Jakob Zinberg from Denmark is our service judge this first match. Well, as I say, this is, a, is the second meeting between the two. The first time they met was last year in the first round of the Japan Super Series, and it went the full distance, 21-18 in the deciding game. Ian, you were mentioning that Li Shui Rei has had injury problems. Of course, she withdrew from the China Open at the end of last year and didn't play the Hong Kong either, withdrew as though she had qualified for the Super Series finals. Now, the problem was actually a foot injury, but I'm noticing that she's got her right knee very heavily strapped. But it is a question, really, of whether she's back to this full fitness. She didn't look fit at the All England Championships, in my opinion. No, I think it'll be really interesting to see uh, how much work and how much volume she's able to been put in uh, since Birmingham. Um, there is, there was some talk about a knee injury as well as the foot injury as well. So it will be really interesting to see how she goes. Traditionally, she's someone who's tended to play more tournaments than the other Chinese players. She likes rhythm, she likes a lot of matches. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what level of confidence she's playing with at the moment. Yes, indeed, because Last year, she played 10 tournaments, reached 10 finals. In fact, she had reached 11 consecutive finals because she was in the final of the Super Series finals of 2013. That's an extraordinary record, isn't it? And her loss in the second round of the All England Championships was her first loss before the final for 15 months. That's incredible, isn't it? So, yes, I mean, she does play a lot. She gets through a lot. You know, there's other players who maybe play more tournaments but they're not getting through to the finals in the same way as she is no i think that's true but even before that period you when she was coming through as a younger player she did tend to they did tend to enter in a lot of tournaments to build her confidence up and she's she is a rhythm type player confidence type player so you know she's not played as much as she normally does so as i say uh, maybe maybe we'll see her a little bit vulnerable early on here mm. yeah i agree Oh, gosh, that's good judgment, isn't it? Oh, good net shot.
Oh, magnificent. What a good rally. Well, we've talked about the Olympic champion and defending champion here. Ian, what about the qualities of Akane Yamaguchi? Well, we saw a lot of them demonstrated in that rally, really. She's not scared to play a full range of strokes. She changes the tempo. She took the pace off. She put pace in. She's a very accomplished player for somebody so young. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Five, Won't turn 18 until the 6th of June. So presumably she could qualify for not only this year's World Junior Championships, but next year's as well. Yeah, that'll be an interesting choice. Uh, obviously this year's will be during the Olympic qualifying period, so Japan and, uh, and the player herself have got a choice to make there. Decision. Yeah, nicely played by Luis Beret. Good all-round athlete, isn't she? She moves well. Luis Beret, she's got nice shots. Can't help but wonder though with Akane Yamaguchi. I know she's young and she's possibly going to grow a little more, but she's only. 1 meter 56, which is about 5 foot 2. Now the next 5 foot 1 at the post and 5 foot in the middle. Is that going to be a disadvantage to her if she doesn't grow a little bit more, do you think? Well, I think the trend recently has been for countries to look for slightly taller athletes in the ladies' singles event, rangy, rangy type athletes. But there are some advantages to this size as well. She's very, she's very nimble. She's got good flexibility. She changes direction very well. And she's very strong in the leg, which compensates a little bit for that lack of height. you were making earlier, Ian, is already uh, coming to fruition that Lichware looks a little bit tentative. And it's not that necessarily she's nervous, it's that lack of confidence from playing tournaments. That last shot, the block into the net. Yeah, that's not, that's not like her. She's a very, very solid player, very consistent, likes to move the shuttle around, plays with a good margin of error, likes to keep her opponent on the move, but that's another good example of what you were saying, Jill, there. She'd work the rally well, work the space, but just didn't have the confidence to play the winning shot. Oh, it's just wide. Well, we do have the challenge system in place here. I don't think that was worth a challenge. I think that was a very good call by the line judge. Oh, she touched it. Touched she touched it. it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't spot that at the time. Mm. Good defence from Lee Ray. Instead of trying to block it, lifted it, and Akane Yamaguchi was rushing forward to the net. Yeah, that might be one of the themes to look out for, Li Xiaorei, not letting Yamaguchi come in and have time on the front court where she's so skillful. That could be a tactic that develops throughout this, uh, this match. Well, the error on the return of serve there brings the scores back level. landed in 
great lengths on the clear. Yeah, she's having a good old look at it and looking down to the line. It's a pure misjudgment. Oh, my goodness. What a recovery from Akane Yamaguchi. And that inspirational shot at the end of that rally takes her to the mid-game interval with a two-point advantage. I did think, though, Ian, both players using the, the back deep corners very well in that last rally. There's a real, you can already see your point that you've made about the hold and flick from the net, keep the other player away from that net area. And there's been some nice pushes deep in court. Yeah, both players are very skillful in the front court area, so all the coaches will be aware of the opponent's skills, so they won't want to be giving time to either of these players on the, on the forecourt. Interesting, Yamaguchi. She's playing slightly higher to the rear court because she's playing from the quicker end. So she's having to use a little bit more height. It's a little bit easier for Lee from this end to punch it quicker into the back corners as we saw in that last rally. and headshot. Oh my goodness me. Oh, what happened there? Did the umpire call that a fault? Let's have another look at that. No, it went under the net from Yamaguchi, didn't it? Yeah, it didn't go over. No. It would have been an interesting call for the umpire if it yes. hadn't done. <laughs> One or two unforced errors now from the youngster, Akane Yamaguchi. Yeah, interesting since the break, four consecutive points to Lee, and you have to feel that the coach has just asked her to put a little bit more tempo into the rallies, just try and keep Yamaguchi off balance. That's certainly what's been happening. And we're starting to see a few mistakes, as you say, Jill. We're going to make that five straight points now since the mid-game interval. No, it was a nice idea. Going to drive the defensive shot and turn it across court. push into that deep backhand corner causing problems for Yamaguchi she's trying to get around the head just taking it too late and that's why the error occurs that's short yeah. apologizes for hitting her opponent and the, the whole rally set up by that quality net shot that you were talking about earlier Is that? Yeah, two disguised punch clears, one to the backhand corner, one to the forehand. And that's now eight of nine points since the mid-game interval. 
what a turnaround. Yes, as you say, but a lot of it's about the pace she's using into these back two corners, keeping Yamaguchi off balance, not letting her get into a favorite four-court position. It's been very effective since the coaching interval. Overdone it. Yeah, but very much commanding the rallies now, isn't she? She's dictating the pace. Yes, and the movement's so good here. Although she misses it, she's taking it so early, makes it look so easy in the forecourt. Stretch racket arm of Lee away. Laid it herself into all sorts of trouble there, Yamaguchi. I thought that was going out. I thought the return of serve, the slice straight shot there from Nishwe Ray. I thought that was going to go wide. All academic now because it was taken. Well, game points now for the defending champion and number one seed. Five game point opportunities. 11 of the last 15 points. Oh, well it hit the tape at the top of the tape but fell back her side. Gucci was covering that one. And that's gone wide. And the defending champion, Lee Schwerberway, as confirmed by the umpire, 21 16. Well, since that big game interval, Lee Schwerberway looked a different player. Their confirmation. 16 minutes for the first game, 21-16. Well, both sets of coaches busy with their players. I'm sure Chen Jin was saying something about the round the headshot there. We don't know what. Well, what would you be saying? Well, she had a lot of success punching quick, quick flicks and clears into that round the head corner. And I'm sure he's reinforcing the fact that that was a successful tactic after the mid game interval. Just since Yamaguchi got a little bit frustrated there, she was always a little bit off balance in the rear court and maybe trying to do too much, not playing with enough patience and playing the rallies out and trying to create openings going for a shot's too early. I'm sure that's what Sato's talking about there. He'll be telling her she's got the better end now. It'll be easier for her to hit a good length. And she needs to be a little bit more patient, create the space, and then change the, change the speed of the rally. Mm, losing all 
of their allotted time. So the umpire calls for the start of the second game. Oh, the lucky net cord for Yamaguchi. It was an amazing turnaround, wasn't it, from the mid-game interval. In game number one, Lee Ray was just seemed a completely different player. Yeah, certainly it was an example of where the coaches do have an influence with that mid-game interval. Uh, Chinese coaches were able to come on, restructure the game, more pace going on to the rear, into the rear two corners and uh, turn the whole thing round. landed in that's she's got to be aware that she's playing the the end where the shuttle will hold up slight drift in the arena it's well known to all the players they both played yesterday so should be aware of it it's gonna oh I was gonna say that's gonna land in <laughs> Well, last week in India, I don't think I got any right. No, I, no, I thought she played that with enough height, looked a good length. Oh, that's a super shot. What an angle. Yeah, just rolling that racket head at the last moment. Causing the disguise. Ha! Do you think Yamaguchi will change her game plan for this second game? Not only, obviously, she lost the first, so playing the same way, perhaps. Uh, maybe it wasn't tactics, perhaps it was just those unforced errors. But uh, the point that you made is that from that far side of the court, you can hit a little firmer and harder with the punch clears because the shuttle is going to hold up. Do you think she's going to try and exploit that? I, I, I would expect her to, yeah, just to put a little bit more pace on. There, we're just seeing it there, flicking into the rear corners, not letting Lee get onto that net position. But I do think as the rallies go on, the superior footwork of Lee is really telling in these rallies. She's Yamaguchi's gradually getting out of position and off balance and then trying to force the play. So I think she's got to be a little bit more positive early on in the rally to try and get control of the rallies early, try and make Lee a little late on the shuttle and see if she can start to dictate some of these rallies herself. That's a great rally. Good pace into the rear court, like we were talking about, Jill. And a nice, lovely slice to finish. But she created the space there. We see Lee off balance. That creates the space for the cross net. A good one, too. skill isn't it Four, five. yeah I think this is a favorite shot that's a signature shot that 
cross slice from round the head. Very difficult to pick for the opponent. Well, she does always look so disappointed in herself, doesn't she, when she makes an error, Yamaguchi? Well, it was an error. She had time there. Lee forced into playing the higher clear. Yamaguchi, lots of time. And guilty of just a, an unforced error, really. Oh, that goes down as a miss as well. It was a wide open court. She needn't have tried to play it so close to the net. No, I think Yamaguchi does well. She, she puts a little bit of pace on it. Li Xiaoru was looking to take it earlier to the net, but she was forced to take it a little bit further away from the net than she thought she'd have to, and that caused the error. Good follow up. Oh, yeah. I think this tilt to rally will sort Yamagu uh, suit Yamaguchi a little bit. There's less movement in that rally, the mid-court exchange. She's getting into position early, not having to run the long diagonal, so she'll be looking to encourage that sort of exchange. Mm, that's landed well in. This time it's Lee forcing the play a little bit. You can see she's having to turn, take it behind her. I'm trying to be too aggressive with that cross net shot. Yeah, well, it's the fact that she's hit a couple cross court from that position on the return of serve for outright winners that then means that Yamaguchi's going to start looking for the cross court, which leaves a bit of a gap down the forehand side. Gone wide. Seven, just when she's got herself a little bit of a lead. That's two unforced errors, and she just can't afford that against someone like Lee. She's too good, she's too solid for that. Yamaguchi's really got to cut these errors out. Nice block. Good judgment too. So it's over. Ten, eight. Play. Backhands. Brilliant. My goodness, what a rally from Akane Yamaguchi. And a three point advantage at the mid game interval of game number two. But remember, she had a two point advantage in the opening game and failed to convert. Yeah, completely dictating the pace. That's what you were suggesting. Yeah, and great use of the width of the court. We talk about the depth front to back a lot, but that was great use. Cut to one side and the change of pace hitting the other sideline. Really good play. As I say, if she can just reduce the number of errors, she's right in this match. Yeah, quite 
caused a sensation, Akane Yamaguchi, a couple of years ago when she came through the qualifying of her home event, the Japan Super Series. She'd only played one previous Super Series event prior to that. That was in the J Japan Open the year prior to that and won the title. It was an extraordinary achievement. Became the youngest ever winner of a Super Series event at 16 years, three months Play. and 16 days and still holds that record. It take a special player to break that. Now that's going to be a tough one. Certainly finding a better length from this end, getting confidence with the clears, keeping Lee pinned in that back corner, forcing the error. Good play. sort of errors that we simply aren't used to seeing from Yu Shui Wei. Oh, that's gone wide as well. Goodness me. Fourteen, eight. Five straight points for Yamaguchi. It is a game of errors at the moment. I mean, I'm sure Yamaguchi will be disappointed with that one. She was there in plenty of time, just a simple push down the line, put it out the side. Let's a little bit of the pressure off. Oh, that's found the back line, though. So that's a lovely push from Yamaguchi. Yeah, just inside that back line. is a very very good fight back I did wonder I have to say Ian at the start of this second game Yamaguchi had been in front in the first and then you know losing 11 of the next 15 points I wondered if psychologically that would affect her but not a bit of it this is absolutely terrific great character shown here by the youngster well this is what we were saying I mean last year you know she came through so many matches to get through to the main draws and gradually built up some confidence and she's a good match player and for her age it's quite incredible really the maturity that she shows in in this type of match against Olympic champion 18, former world number one I mean it's incredible really for someone of of that age yeah yeah I mean this isn't even close I mean, Lee Shuere, I think, looks a little disinterested in this second game now. But I said that about Rachanuk Intanon last week. <laughs> what, what was that? Was that the quarterfinal or the semi final when she was 9 17 down? I think it was the semi final against Carolina Marin. And she came back to win it. So you never know. Can't give up on it. Oh, that's lovely. She's beaten her a couple so of times with the cross slice there and points. plays the reverse straight slice. Nice variety and great confidence from the youngster. And game point opportunities. A whole host of them. Game. Converts on her first. 21-10. One, one game all. Yeah. Confirmed by the umpire. One game all. 
Well, the Olympic champion really capitulating in that second game. Their confirmation, one game apiece, 33 minutes into this match. So what would you be saying right now if you were talking to Akane Yamaguchi? She's obviously just done brilliantly. You've got to keep her on an even keel. You've got to uh, keep her doing the same things, I guess. Uh, I think she needs to be aware of the, uh, the faster end. She's going to play from the faster end. In the second game, she was able to hit firmer into the rear court corners, and she's just got to change that a little bit. And I'd be saying she's got to score as many points as she can at this end. And if she turns round in contact, she's going to have a great chance because she's just played so well from the slower end and controlled the length so well from that end. So I think it's about really finding ways to stay in this match, score points from this end, keep yourself in the game, so the second half you're going to have the advantage of that good end again. Interesting, she's out on court first. Yeah, and just throwing that serve up, having a look at the speed of it, trying to get a feel for this end, because there is a difference, and it's quite marked. 20 seconds. I think one to watch in this third game as well, Jill. I just felt, Lee, there was one rally in that second half of the second game where she went in to do a lunge on the forehand side, and she gave it up, and she stepped over that Final knee. Game. And I just wonder whether that right Not knee all. is still giving a slight problem. So third and deciding game. Oh, that's landed well in. Goodness me. I'm sure she thought it was going wide rather than uh, long, but that was a poor judgment. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it right at the beginning, but um, sh this is not really the Lee we know. I mean, she is missing a little bit of confidence. Looks so like she is missing a bit of match play. Certainly making very uncharacteristic errors at the moment. Yeah, I didn't like the way she lunged forward. I agree with you, Ian. And there, even at the end of the rally, she just saw a hop rather than put the weight on it. I just, I just think there's a little bit of something there. Might just be lack of confidence with it. Or it could be just a little bit of the injury still there. Good judgment that time from Yamaguchi. Drop long. I appreciate what you're saying, Ian, because you know both you and I have played at a at a high level. But you know there does come a time where you've got to say to yourself, you know, the wear and tear of this sport. And yes, it does hurt. I know all about knee problems. I've gone through five knee operations myself, and you, you get to the stage well. You know, if you want to play, you're just going to have to put up with it and get on with it. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And obviously, she wants to play. I'm sure she wants to play. She's someone who's always looked as though she's really enjoyed the tournament situations. But it does take a little bit of time to build the confidence back up when you've had an injury. And I just think it's she wants to play. I think she's committed to it. But you've got to. It takes a little bit of time to build that confidence up to make your normal movements and fully commit to to certain situations on the court. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. I agree wholeheartedly. I can remember I got to the stage Four, where, three. you know, I was losing to players that I used to be able to beat. And I said to myself, well, you know, quite simply, I'm not prepared to play like this. So I'm just going to go 100%. And if the knee injury breaks down again, it breaks down again, you know, but uh, I have to be committed. I can't play like this anymore. But whether she's got to that stage yet or not, and we don't know what the injury problem is either. We're surmising. Oh, a little lucky there from Yamaguchi. Service over. Vicious deflection. Four. 
Yeah, very lucky, but it's interesting to see Lee putting a lot more pressure on from the rear court, trying to trying to dominate from the rear court when she's got time there. Maybe trying to reduce the rallies down a little bit. That was nice at the net, wasn't it, from the so by the way. Five, oh. the backhand cross-court net shot, getting her opponent out of position. Both players lacking a little bit of consistency at the start of this third game. One or two errors from both sides at the moment. Do you not think that's perhaps because they're both wanting the desire to control the rally and therefore they're really going for those putting their opponent under pressure? Yeah, I think that's probably true, and but I think it's for very different reasons, possibly. I think Lee Sharu is missing a little bit of confidence. And Yamaguchi knows that if it goes into the longer rallies, she's at a disadvantage. So, yeah, I guess that builds pressure. Didn't miss by much, but it certainly missed. Played by the defending champion. Eight, five. Yeah. Just going back on, sorry to interrupt you, and just going back on that point, I'm having a little chuckle to myself because, of course, I as a player was outrageously adventurous, and I bet I drove you absolutely bonkers. You tried to coach me once, didn't you? And, and you know, lack of consistency because it was hit and miss with me the whole time. I'm not sure I should comment on that. I've got to work <laughs> with you for four days, Jill, really. I maybe have to be diplomatic there. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, there's different types of players, you know, that players that want to be very, very positive and try and put pressure on the opponents. You have to accept they're going to make a few mistakes. So it depends on the psychology of the players as well as to how you coach them and what, what you recommend to them in different situations. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, that's, that's, I just reacted to the, they're making mistakes because they're really trying to put pressure on. But, you know, you look at it at, in a slightly different way. Ooh, we can have a challenge here. Challenge. The challenge Yana because challenge. it was called in. in. Yamaguchi thought it was out. And I think I agree with Yamaguchi. But as I said last week in India, I don't think I got one right on the first day. The All England, I promised everybody I was going to go down to the opticians after the tournament. Well, Hawkeye, our instant review system, will come into play here. Confirming me is right for once. Better form this week, Jill. <laughs> Showing better form. A <laughs> little bit of practice last week. <laughs> You're back on your game this week. Yeah. Well, good challenge there from Seven, Yamaguchi. Eight. Important point, as we said, she's looking to score as many points as you can from this end. 7-8, very different to 6-9. Yeah. Interesting reaction from Lee Shui Rui. 
She knows that was important. Retrieving. Yeah. Well, that retrieving, really putting pressure on oh, Lee Schwerey, feeling she had to hit the perfect Nine. shot to play the winner. I'm sure Yamaguchi's coach will be really pleased with this point. That's what she's got to do from a less favoured end. Fight for every point. Try and pick up as many as you can. And that was a great effort. Retrieving again, can't believe it. Oh, magnificent disguise drop shot from Lee Schwere to finish the rally. What retrieving initially from Yamaguchi. Just rolling the racket head around the shuttle. Super shot. Good defense. to just Ten. one point. Landed in. Now coming forward there, at least where eight, that's the sort of shot Ten. where if oh. you're lacking a bit of confidence, you're not fully committed. And that proves your point. Yeah, I think there's definite signs here that there's still a slight problem with that knee. It's a couple of times in the last three rallies where she's just not looked comfortable coming into that deep lunge position. Shot, my goodness me. And Akane Yamaguchi has the advantage at the change of ends here in the deciding game. And last year's champion down and very, very slow to get up again. There's the deep plunge. So 11 10. The advantage to Yamaguchi. Well, Ian, you said she needed to try and keep it as close as possible. As close as possible. She's actually got the lead. Well, I think she'll take great heart from that. And I'm sure the coach is now saying you can play a little bit quicker into the back corners now, like you did in the second game. But she's, the fight and spirit she showed there was great. She managed to reduce the number of errors, was really playing a retrieving type game and just fighting for every point. And that was exactly what was required from the from the faster end. Yeah, because remember she was five eight 11, down. 10. So Play. six of the last eight points. Yeah. 
over's over. 11, all. Goodness. Oh, what a net exchange. Yamaguchi was there, but she still couldn't control it. A really interesting rally. I mean, Lee basically playing a no-lift game there. Not prepared to take the risk of going to the rear court from this side, forcing the net play. When she couldn't play net, she played flat. Oh, three, game, three points since the mid-game interval, and all three points to Mish were away. Yeah, there again, refusing yeah, to lift. Yeah, well, even from really late 13. there, felt that it was worth the gamble of trying to play the net. That's clearly going to be the tactic for this, this game. Oh, hesitation. I think she thought that was going wide. Oh, look at that. That's brilliant. Well, there's signs to me, Ian, that because of this lack of match practice and so on from uh, Lee Shwe Ray, that if she's not playing winners on the first or second attempt and actually winning the point, then she seems to run out of ideas. Yeah, and that's confidence. I mean, if she gets through this match, I'm sure she'll be better and take a lot of confidence from, from coming through this because she knows she's not playing her best, but she's fighting hard, she's still in there, and uh, every chance of coming through at the moment. Just wide. Oh, so this is a difficult Over. one to call, isn't it? So before that point, Yamaguchi being called by a coach, and I'm sure a coach was saying, watch net. She's not going to lift, even when she's late. Look, you've got to cover that net. And she did it well in that point. They're taking it very late, but still playing net, not risking the lift. Yamaguchi reading it well. Missed it. Could be a very costly error. Oh, I have to say that could be a big miss. Straightforward block there, lots of time. Just missed it. She can't afford that. It's all a question of who can hold their nerve. Two point cushion for Akane Yamaguchi.
Lift is on. That time, good judgment from the defending champion. Goodness. Yeah, well played. And Lee Shui Rei, back level. Yeah, Lee showing a little bit of experience there, not trying to force that last shot, just looking to bring it down to the line. Nice play. Temptation would have been to try and hit that really hard to finish it. Just placed it nicely. That's gone too long, too flat with the smash. 18, 17. And at this crucial stage on a run of three straight points, Anish away gets her lead back once more. Make that four straight 19. points. Now she's not playing anything back to the net. Oh, here we go. That's short. Yeah. Excellent play from the defending champion. Oh, my goodness me. Five straight points from 15 17 down to have three match point opportunities. It's gone wide and long, and what a comeback from the Olympic champion, Li Shui Rui. Six straight points to close out the match. Well, she looked under severe pressure at one stage there, but her experience showing through in the end. 21-16, 10-21, 21-17 in the deciding game confirms the umpire. 57 minutes, just three minutes shy of the hour mark and confirmation that Lee Shui Rei is through to the quarterfinal. But my goodness me, what a great match against Akane Yamaguchi.
get to the stage well you know if you want to play you're just going to have to put up with it and get on with it yeah I, I agree with you and obviously she wants to play I'm sure she wants to play she's someone who's always looked as though she's really enjoyed Goodness. Yeah, well. So after that thrilling opening match, the women's singles, we turn our attention to men's doubles and the relatively new pairing of Inga Pratama and Ruki Suwadi up against the number eight seeds, Kim Ji Jung and Kim Sa Rang. So led out by the Indonesians, led out by Ruki Karanda Suwadi. 23 year old from West Java. And of course, these two Indonesian players, very well known on the circuit with former partners. Of course, Pratama used to play with Saputro and Suwadi with Angoreawan. First job of our umpire, a toss of the coin. I really can't understand, Ian, why players don't always 